Might be seated, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to proceed with the defense case. <coughs> Sorry for the slight de delay. We did have to address some legal issues, which have been taken care of. We'll now move on to the defense case. Mr. Blinkus, call your first witness, please. Joseph Blaitler. Joseph Blaitler to the stand, please. Please remain standing. Place your left hand on the Bible. Do you serve in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony given to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Joseph J. Blaitler, B-L-A-E-T-T-L-E-R. Thank you. All right, you may have a seat, sir. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. That microphone does not... Um, it only records. Uh, yes, it doesn't project your voice in the courtroom at all, so you have to keep your voice up. If you don't understand a question, please indicate that, and I'll have counsel rephrase the question. Yes. All right. And if you hear an objection, stop answering until the court rules on the objection. Understood. All right. Very good, sir. Mr. Blankus, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Mr. Blankus, where do you live? I live in Morristown. And what do you do for an occupation? I'm a private investigator. Uh, do you have a, a, a company name? Yes, East Coast Private Investigations in New Jersey. And can you give us a little bit of your background, please? Uh, my background, I'm a retired Deputy Chief of Police from the city of Union City. I was there for 23 years. After retiring, I became a private investigator slash police consultant. And who have you consulted for? Uh, numerous law firms, County of Suffolk, Georgetown Law Center, and the name of your company is what, sir? East Coast Private Investigations of New Jersey. Uh, do you know my client, Michael Barrasso? Just by name. And uh, uh, were you contacted at any point in a professional capacity by Michael Barrasso? Yes. And, and when was that? On or about July 31st of 2019. And uh, did he hire you to do something? Yes. What did he hire you to do? He asked me to conduct two background checks for him. And, and can you tell me the names of the two people he had to do background checks on? I believe one was Goodwin and the other one was, I don't know how to pronounce the name, it begins with a K-A. Cataract? Cataract. All right, and, and, and did, you, did you do a background check on both of those individuals? Yes, I did. And did you provide your background check to Mr. Barrison after you completed it. Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked Defense Exhibit 700A1 and ask you if you recognize this document. These are the background checks I conducted. However, this one document I don't recognize. We will then just take that out of there if you would. Nope, sorry. And after you uh, conducted your business, uh, did you provide Michael Barrison with a copy of 700A1? Yes, I did. Did you have any other discussions with Michael Barrison? I did have other discussions with him, but I really don't recall what they were. Right. Judge, I move in uh, 700A1. I object.
the objection is sustained. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Belinkus. With regards to the background check, and, and I do not want you to say anything specific, what does that background check look at? Looks at people's previous residence, relatives, phone numbers, liens, judgments, bankruptcies, criminal histories. It's, uh, employment comes up sometimes. Okay, I have nothing further. Any cross examination? Briefly, Judge. Uh, Mr. Blaitler, <coughs> you never met uh, Robert Goodwin? No. And you never met Lauren Canterac? No. And you didn't. Uh, confirm or corroborate any of the information that showed up in the background check? No. Did you, and you told Mr. Barrison certain methods that he could do to, to verify these things if he wanted to? Yes, if he wished to follow up. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Judge. All right, you may step down, sir. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Blinkus, any redirect? No, Judge. Oh, you may step down. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Blinkus. Defense calls Larry Davison. Mr. Davison. Uh, Mr. Davidson, please remain standing for a moment, if you would, please. Uh, place your left hand on that Bible. Uh, raise your right hand and listen to my court clerk, please. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony you put to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Uh, Lawrence Davidson, D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. Thank you. All right, you may have a seat, sir. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. That microphone only records, it, it does not project your voice in the courtroom. All right, so you have to keep your voice up. If you don't understand a question, please indicate that. I'll have counsel rephrase. If you hear any counsel object, uh, please stop answering until the court resolves that objection. Go ahead, Mr. Blinkus. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Davidson, uh, where do you live? Uh, Glen Gardner, New Jersey. And, and can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you do for a living? I drive a truck. And, and who do you work for specifically? Uh, Robert Jenkins is a nurse. And, and what do you specifically do for them? Just drive? Haul trees. Okay. Uh, do you know my client, Michael Barrison? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? I see a <laughs> smile on your face. How long have you known him? Uh, probably 20 years anyway. Okay, and how do you know him? I know him from the farm. You know, I you know work for him. Uh, brought hay in for them and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, did there come a time uh, in August of 2019 where Michael Barrison hired you to do something other than haul hay or uh, deliver things from the nursery? Yes. Uh, what did he hire you to do? He asked me to uh, watch, the, watch the barn. And, and when you say watch the barn, yeah. What were you watching for? Uh, uh, well, he was having problems with a girl that was in the house. And, and I don't even know her name or anything. And, and, to, and in hiring, did he express concerns about her? Yes. And, and is that specifically why he asked you to, uh, to come there? Yes. And, and what time would you come uh, during the day? Uh, probably like 8 o'clock at night. And, and I, I wouldn't be there during the day, just at night time. Okay, and uh, what time did you leave? Uh, like 6 o'clock in the morning. I, I had coffee with uh, Mike and trying to talk to him, but he was so, he was so, I don't know, just so messed up that he could even hardly talk. All right, so uh, do you recall the first time uh, you came to the property uh, um, on a particular night? Oh, the first time? First time. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, driving up there, and the, the girl comes out of the house, comes running out of the house, and says, who are you, who are you, who are you? I just kept on going. And I got up to the farm, and I saw Mike, and, uh, and then sat there for maybe 10, 10 minutes, and two cars come up the driveway. 
And, and, I said, uh, oh boy. At, at some point in time, uh, did those people in those two cars identify themselves? Well, yeah, one went around the barn and one pulled up by me. And, and they were police, so I, they were on, on my cars. I didn't know who they were. And uh, did you have a discussion with the police? Just all he said was, uh, how, how's everything? I said, it's quiet right now. And th and that was it. And they left. And did they ask you what you were doing there or why you were hired uh, by Michael Barrison? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Now, so... Um, I'm not sure if you told us the first day that you uh, came there where this incident happened. Was that August 1st? I believe so, yes. Okay, and uh, did you come there each night thereafter uh, to the day of the incident? Yes. And uh, each night, what, what would you do? What was your, like, job? Just to park by the barn, make sure nobody goes in a barn. Okay. And, and during that week leading up to the shooting, did you have occasion to see Michael Barrison? I seen Mike every night, yep. He, he, he constantly was walking the property. Constantly walking the property. You mean after hours? Yeah, all night. All night he was walking the property. And, and did you have an opportunity to observe him physically? Like his, his, his physical appearance. It was, yes, it was. He what was, was it? I don't know. It, it was just ter terrible. He just, he just couldn't. He was beside himself. And, and you've known him for how long? Like 20 years. Have you ever seen him anywhere near in this condition during that 20 year period? Never. And with regards to your observation, what specifically did you observe about his physical appearance? He was just just distraught. He was, uh, I mean, he could hardly talk. He could hardly talk. Did, did we used to have coffee in the morning. He'd be, he'd be sitting at the, at the desk there, and, and, and I'm trying to talk to him, and he was just, he was out of it. He was out of it. Now, you said you, you observed him walking the property. Uh, every night. Every night I was there. What hours of the night? Well, I got there like 8 or 9 o'clock, and he was he was up all night. All night. And did he show he, he, He'd come out and see me, and then he'd go back, you know, back around again and be on the porch, and then come back out again. And, and how many times would he do this on, on each night? Probably three or four times a night come out, you know, by me. Did you notice anything in the way he was dressing that was different than you uh, you had previously observed prior to these? Uh, no. I have nothing further, Judge. Mr. Shellhorn, any cross-examination? Just briefly, Judge. Go ahead. Mr. Davis, good afternoon. How you doing? Do you remember uh, being interviewed by members of the prosecutor's office on October 2nd, 2020? Uh, where was that at? Did they, did they meet you at the uh, Hunterdon County Hospital? Medical Center? Yeah. Do you remember that interview? Yes. You probably talked to them for about an hour that day? Yeah. Um, and you didn't mention anything to them during the course of that interview about anyone running out of the house or trying to flag you down? I don't know. Maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, we didn't even talk about that. You would agree with me that uh, during the time that you were there at the farm on the overnights, no one ever tried to come and enter the barn during the times you were there? No. No, the only one, the only guy that came up and, you know, surprised me was Mike. He came he come walking up by the truck. And, okay, Mike. <laughs> Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Any redirect? No, sir. All right, you may step down, sir. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Thank you. <clears throat> the 
Mr. Balinkas, go ahead. Defense calls Christiana Cook slash Gibbs. All right, Miss uh, Christiana <coughs> Gibbs, Cook Gibbs. Hi, ma'am. Just remain standing for a moment. If you could place your left hand on the Bible on the witness stand. Please raise your right hand and listen to my court. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony given to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Christiana Cook Gibbs, C-O-O-K-E hyphen G-I-B-B-S. Thank you. Right, Ms. Cook Gibbs, you may have a seat. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. Thank you. Right, that microphone does not um, project your voice. It just records, so you have to speak loudly. If you don't understand a question, please indicate that. Go ahead, Mr. Malinkas. Thank you, uh, Ms. Gibbs, uh, where do you live? I live in Alamuchi, New Jersey. And uh, who are you employed by? I'm employed by the Township of Washington in Morris County. And, and uh, can you briefly describe your, uh, your background? Um, I have... Uh, Bachelor's of Science degree in Animal Science. I have my Master's in Public Health. Okay. Uh, who do you currently work for? Washington Township, Morris County. And, and what, uh, what's your uh, specific position for that? My specific title is that I'm the Health Officer for the Health Department of Washington Township. And how long have you been doing that? I've been employed by Washington Township for 36 years. And, and, and what does that entail? Like, what's your job description? Uh, um, being a rural uh, community, the bulk of my position was um, I, I'm charged with administrating, uh, administering laws that protect public health, um, both municipal and state. Um, a lot of my job involves environmental work, septics and wells. We do everything from rabies to food inspections. Last two years, COVID. Okay. Um, did you have an occasion to respond to uh, my client, Michael Barrison's property on August 6th? I did. And, and before we get to that, um, prior to that day, um, did you know Michael Barrison? I did. And, and how did you know him? Uh, through dealings with the property. Um, the property was a, a farm. And um, at some point in the late 1990s, it was developed into a dressage facility, and a, a large equestrian center was built. And I was involved with the permitting of both the front home that was moved and, and made into a double home, and then the equestrian center in the back. So well and septic permits I was involved with from the beginning of the development of the property. And um, then somewhere, uh, Michael wasn't my primary um, contact um, with the property, um, but eventually Michael turned out to be my point person there. And I remember there was a septic problem um, in about 10 years in, and we had to re 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 rebuild the septic. And at that point, Michael was, was the point person for the property. Okay, so prior to the six, over the years, you've had an opportunity to... Uh, come in contact with Michael and observe him uh, in normal day affairs, correct? Yes, sir. And, and how would you describe him in those days? Um, very confident, very dignified, elegant man, you know. On the 6th, uh, do you know uh, who signed the complaint against the uh, Michael Barrison that caused you to go to the property? Well, have, have we established that? I want to ask some fo fo foundational questions. Okay. <coughs> Why did you go to the property uh, on August 6th? I went to the property because a complaint was um, received by another department in, in the township. Uh, the, the, build, the construction department received a complaint um, alleging that unpermitted work had happened at the property um, and ancillary to that it would have involved my department there was allegations that a, an apartment was constructed in the barn and and therefore it would have impacted my authority and I, how, how does that impact your authority a, uh, 
the department of the barn? Um, because the septic system for the barn was only sized to accommodate a certain amount of flow. Septics are designed for gallons, and that septic was only designed for a, a very specific purpose and not to accommodate living space. Okay, and uh, uh, prior to going to the property, uh, did you ascertain who made the complaint? Uh, I, I don't recall. I, uh, the complaint was not made directly to me. I did not have any interaction with the complainant before I went on the property. Okay. Now, when you said you went on the property, uh, did anyone else go with you? I specifically drove to the property with my colleague from the health department, but we met there at the same time with representatives of the construction department and the fire official. So we all can kind of convened on the property at the same time in different vehicles. And how many vehicles converged on the property? There could, there could have, there would have been at least three vehicles, maybe four, but at least three. Okay, and uh, at some point in time, um, did you have an opportunity uh, to observe Michael Barrasov? Yes, I did. And, and uh, did you observe him before uh, you and the other town officials started doing your job, so to speak, walking around and looking at things? We originally um, arrived to the property and, and got out of the cars at the house in the front, the two-family house, took a look around, didn't appear that anyone was there. We knocked on the doors, no one was there. So we were getting in the cars to go back. The barn is quite a distance off the road. And then the gentleman who I found out who was the complainant arrived, spoke to a con a, the construction official. I, I backed away from the conversation. I wasn't part of it. And, and again, when you say the person that made the complaint, who was that? I, I believe his name was Robert, but I don't, I don't particularly remember his last name. Goodwin? Yes. Now, you indicated that uh, when Robert Goodwin started talking to the construction officials, you backed away. I did. Well, why did you do that? I just didn't didn't get a good feeling about, you know, it, it, he didn't complain to me, he didn't reach out to me, and I just, just, I, I, I literally backed away. Did there come a time when you uh, uh, went up towards the stable area, the barn area? Yes, we did. We, we all got in our cars and we proceeded up to the stable. And at that point, did you have an opportunity to see Michael Barrison? I did. He and um, Mr. Lundberg, who was the gentleman who I had originally dealt with on the property from the beginning, were outside sitting on the porch, I recall. And um, we, we, Mr. Lundberg got up and came and greeted me. Um, and I then walked back with Mr. Lundberg and we, we spoke with Michael at the time to let him know why we were there. And, and uh, you mentioned the name Lundberg and someone that you had dealt with. Is, is he Michael's uh, partner in that stable, as far as you know? I don't know what the uh, official relationship was between Mr. Barrison and Mr. Lundberg, but I assume it was a, a, a business a, arrangement and a, you know, a, a, a mutual passion for what they were doing there. Right. Now, do you recall when you first observed Michael Barrison on that day? I do. And, and can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your uh, impressions were when you first saw him? He was very distraught, um, very disheveled, um, very, very upset. Can you describe his physical appearance? Um, unlike my prior meetings with him, he was... He, he was very, very, very different. He was, you know, sweating and pacing and mumbling. Did he appear to have bathed recently? I don't remember. I, I couldn't get that specific, but it was much, much, much different than any prior meeting that I had had with him. 
Would, would shocking be a reasonable term? I was very Objection. just... That's a little leading, Mr. Malinkas. Sustained. How would you describe your observations previously with the observations on August 6th? A very different person. In what way? Um, he was... He was disheveled, he was upset, he, he was undone. He, um, he wasn't the competent guy that I remember. And um, very, very uh, he made comments about being fearful. Uh, Objection, Judge. It's non-responsive, yes, that's hearsay. <clears throat> that's hearsay. You, you, can, you can only describe what you okay. your observations of Mr. Barrison as you've done but nothing nothing that was said okay. that would be hearsay anything else that, uh, that pops into your mind regarding your observations of him uh, no what was your your impression of, of him based on your observations he was very very distraught and and very, very different. Nothing further. Cross examination. Ms. Cook Gibbs, had you ever met the individual that you referred to as Robert Goodwin before that day? I had not. And did you uh, feel like after meeting him that he didn't fit there? Objection. What's the basis for the objection? Impression of whether he fit there? I don't even know. What she said. Well, yeah, I mean, you had her describe what she did when she met him, and that seems to be a fo follow-up by the state. Overruled. <clears throat> Mr. Good. Do you recall when you were interviewed by members of the Washington Township Police Department on September 17th of 2019? I, I honestly didn't, didn't remember it until I got subpoenaed. Um, but now I do remember being um, uh, interviewed. Um, it was a long time ago. Um, do you recall telling them that you, you felt like Mr. Goodwin didn't fit there? I did. I do. You showed, uh, or you and the other township officials came to the property on August 6th unannounced? We did. I, I mean, I don't know if the construction department announced. I, I went there unannounced. I can speak for myself only. Meaning the health department did not notify anyone that they were coming? That's correct. Had you ever observed uh, Mr. Mr. Barrison during a training session? Actually... Yes. Um, I was on the property once to um, watch a horse, and I, I believe Mr. Barrison was there. What was his demeanor during the course of that training session? Very professional. Now, you responded on August 6th to investigate potential health issues or environmental issues? That's correct. And did you identify health issues and environmental issues? I observed um, uh, I observed uh, work that was done without permits that would have required um, the health department involvement. I uh, didn't um, an environmental issue like an end result of, of it no uh, but you know I didn't I didn't observe a malfunctioning septic or something like that but I did observe work that should have been, permitted and, and should have been reviewed and authorized before it was done. For example, that the septic system would have been overloaded by the number of bathrooms or, or something right. of that nature. Right, which could have could have led to a problem down the road. If but, it wasn't located and identified by you on August 6th. Uh, yes. No further questions, Judge. Just one more from me. Go ahead. Can you explain why you didn't feel like Robert Goodwin didn't fit in there when you never really met him before? 
I just got a bad feeling. I just, I don't know what. Nothing further. All right, you may step down, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Balinkas, call your next witness. Bill Herwagon. All right, Mr. Bill Herwagon. Hello, sir. Hello. Well, please remain standing. Place your left hand on that Bible and just turn this way. Face my law clerk. She'll administer an oath. My court clerk, excuse me. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony given to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name and swear your last name for the record. William Harrowagon Jr., H E E R W A G E N. Thank you. All right, very good, sir. Have a seat. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. If you don't understand a question from counsel, please indicate that. I'll have them rephrase. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Blankus. Good afternoon, Mr. Herwagon. Good afternoon. Uh, where do you currently reside? I live in uh, Washington Township, Warren County. And, and what do you do for a living? Uh, currently, I am a life safety instructor for surgery centers. I'm a retired firefighter. Okay, back in... August, specifically August 6, 2019, what did you do? I was the fire inspector for Washington Township, Morris County. And, and can you give the ladies and gentlemen and the jury a, a little bit of your background? Working with Washington Township? Yes. Or, or uh, your previous employment that allowed you to become uh, what you were there? I was... Uh, I'm a retired firefighter, uh, fire captain from Maplewood, New Jersey. I am also a, uh, was a fire marshal for Washington Township, Warren County, for Washington Township, Mars County, and uh, several other uh, towns, Independence and Mansfield. Okay, and uh, back in uh, August of 2019, um, did you have an occasion to respond to my client, Michael Barrison's uh, farm? Yes, I did. And, and uh, why did you respond? It was at the request of the, at the fire marshal at that uh, time. He asked me to take a ride with him to issue uh, violations. And, and uh, to your knowledge, was a complaint filed? At that time, I wasn't aware of anything, no. So basically, you're just asked to come along for the ride, correct? Right, correct. And, and uh, prior to that day, had you had occasion to see Michael Barrison before? No, not at all. So on the 6th, that was the first time uh, that you ever laid eyes on Michael Barrison, correct? That's correct. And, and can you describe his demeanor when you first saw him? Um, when we arrived, he approached us, and uh, there was a short dialogue and he uh, was, seemed very upset to the point where he actually uh, started sobbing. Actual s sobbing? More than crying? Is crying. I use the word sobbing as far as crying. Did you ever determine uh, why he was crying and what issues he had? Um, later on... Uh, I'm going to object on speculation, Greg Judge. Yeah. Let me see that sidebar. <clears throat> Mr. Belenkis, you can rephrase if you wish to. Sure. 
to her wagon. Um, with regards to these uh, uh, code violations, uh, did you, when you were uh, the boss or colleague, uh, determine uh, who was doing the construction at the facility? Um, that was more on my boss's part. Okay. All right, I have nothing further. Thank you. Any cross-examination of Mr. Heerwagen? Briefly, Judge. Uh, Mr. Heerwagen, do you know if the visit to the property was announced to Mr. Barrison before you went there? Uh, no, I was not aware if it was or not. I know it was a second visit to the property where my boss supervisor was there earlier in the day where he, uh, I guess he viewed what was supposed to have been written up. And that he went back later that afternoon to issue the uh, construction violations. And when you talk about uh, that individual, is that Mr. Lopez? That's correct. Who else was at the property when you were there from, from the township? Uh, Neil Juro, he was the construction official at the time. Do you recall if uh, Ms. Cook Gibbs was there at that time? No, she was there? not. I know she wasn't there at the time. It was just the three of us. And you indicated that you had gone there in your capacity uh, as a f related to the fire inf inspection? I was asked to go along as a second party. He was issuing violations, and he felt that it was best to have somebody with him. And there were actual fire violations located at the property? Uh, I believe so. I did not see exactly what they were. Mr. Lopez will be more aware of what exactly he wrote up. I didn't write it up. No further questions, Judge. All right. Can you redirect? No. Fine, right, you may step down, Mr. Hugh Wagon. Thank you, sir. Right, call your next witness, sir. Matthew Lopez. Matthew Lopez? Yes, Mr. Matthew Lopez, please. Now, Mr. Lopez, please uh, remain standing for a minute. Left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Please listen to my court clerk. Do you say in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony given to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I will. Please state your name as well, your last name for the record. Uh, Matthew Lopez, L O P E Z. Thank you. All right, you may have a seat, sir. Please keep your voice up. That microphone only records, it doesn't project your voice in the courtroom, so keep your voice up so everyone can hear. If you don't understand a question, please indicate that. I'll have counsel rephrase. Very good. Mr. Belenkis, go ahead. Mr. Lopez, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a fire inspector. And, and for who? For Washington Township, Morris County. And how long have you been? Can you hear okay? Sort of. I see it, uh, yeah, leaning forward a little bit. Try to keep, and there's a hand back there. Yeah, I, I, I thought that. Just keep your voice up nice and loud. You're Go a ahead. Fire, a fire inspector for Washington Township? Correct. And, and how long have you been doing that? About 10 years. And, and what, what training or experience you have to, to hold a position like that? Uh, I have a fire inspector, fire official certification through the state. Okay. And you've been doing that for 10 years? At, at Washington Township? Washington Township, yep. And uh, directing your attention to August 6th, did you respond to my client's uh, uh, farm in Washington Township? I did. And, and had you received a complaint? We did. If I can approach, i show you D100 E2. and ask you if you recognize that document. I do recognize that. And is that the reason why uh, you decided to go out there on the uh, uh, 6th? That is correct. Now, prior to going out, did you talk to anybody about that, uh, that complaint? We received the complaint and we decided to go out to investigate it the next day. Okay. And, and uh, two people signed that complaint, correct? That is correct. And, and prior to going out, did you attempt to contact those people and try to see what you were dealing with? Uh, we did not. Okay. So 
Does that complaint accurately depict the reasons why you went out on that particular day? Yes, it stated fire code violations were at the property. Okay. Judge, I move uh, D100E2 into evidence. I would object, Judge. What's the basis for the objection? The same objection that I had with the prior document. I think this is hearsay. It's not offered for the truth. Well, it well, is I offered for the truth. Let me see it. Come to the sideboard, please. All right, rephrase your question, Mr. Belinkus. Mr. Lopez, uh, in the complaint... Can you object to that, Judge? Yeah, just, it's your witness, Mr. Belinkus. You can ask him what he did without getting into the specifics. Okay. With regards to the farmhouse, specifically the basement area, Did you go and check down there to determine whether there were any violations? Yes, we went down in the basement. And and what were you checking for? We were looking down in the basement. We were looking for fire code violations. Uh, we were looking to see if anybody was staying down there, and if there was any other violations, such as uh, you know open wiring and missing fire protection devices. And. Were people staying down there? There was nobody there when we were there. Now, you checked the rest of the house, correct? That is correct. And uh, based on your uh, inspection, uh, did you issue violations? Yes, we did. What specifically did you issue? We issued a imminent hazard for the house and for the barn. Okay, let's let's talk about the house first. Um, what were the issues with the house? The house uh, had zero smoke, hardwired smoke alarms. They were all missing from the ceiling. Um, and then there was additional. There was open wiring throughout the building and missing fire um, rated construction from the first and second floor. And I'm sorry, what did you say about the first and second floor? I didn't catch that. There was missing fire rated construction. Uh, the ceiling was missing from the first floor to the second floor. Okay. And, and based on those observations, um, did you issue a violation? Yes. And, and what's the result of you issuing a violation? What are the consequences, so to speak? Um, the owner or operator of the property would have to abate the violations within the time frame the code allowed. Right. And, and is someone obligated to move out and, and remain out of the residence until those specific issues are addressed? With an imminent hazard, nobody has to go back into the property unless it is to abate the imminent hazard. Right. Uh, I've seen pictures of violations posted on the back door. Did you post those? I did. Nobody was at the property, at the house, when the, the violations were issued. So I posted it on the building so anybody that came back saw the violations and were aware. All right, now, would you strike that? What does the violation say are the consequences to anyone who ignores those violations and goes in and resides in the residence? Uh, 
there's fines involved with that. Up to five thousand dollars. Correct. And who's the owner of that property based on your uh, investigation? Uh, I had Sweet Grass Farms uh, and Parson um, Dressage as the owner operator. And, and that's Michael Barrison's company, you know, correct? Uh, yes. Now, so I understand uh, the sequence of events. You place a violation on the the door of the uh, the farmhouse, correct? Yes. And, and there's another stack of papers posted also. What is that? Uh, I'm not sure. Which Why don't one you show them the photograph? If you have it. Well, when you make your determination that there's a violation and, and, and that people must leave, what do you post on the, uh, the doors? I post the notice of violation after I've issued it to the property owner. So at some point in time, you go up to the stable area, correct? Correct. And, and uh, did you uh, post a similar type of violation on that structure? I don't believe I did. I hand delivered it to uh, Mr. Brisson. And when you say you hand delivered it to who, my client? Correct. Mr. Yes. And was he basically, based on your, your inspection, uh, not allowed to re-enter the property and, and sleep there? I, no, nobody can stay there until the imminent hazard has been abated. Can, can we clarify which property you're speaking about? I'm, I'm talking, I thought I did the stable area. Okay. I show you D eight hundred slash eighty one. And ask if if you know what those two pieces of paper take to the back door. The one is my imminent hazard. I'm not sure what that other one is. Well who who put that on the door? I know I, I put the one on the left on the door. I don't recall what the one in the middle is. I'm not sure what that one is in the middle. Well, how many packets do you normally put on a door based on the violations that you observed on that day? I normally just issue the imminent hazard of the notice violation. D five hundred slash five. And ask you if you recognize this document. Yes, that's the imminent hazard that's posted on the left. Okay, and and basically what is what's the purpose of this document? This document was to post that the building had an imminent hazard and anybody that went to the building or tried to get into the building, knew that there was an imminent hazard and was able to read it. And as you sit here today, uh, I'm going to show you 872, which is the other document on the door. Do you recognize that document? Yes, that's the letter for temporary housing that the town had uh, asked to post. Okay. Judge, I, I move 872, which is the letter from the town posted on the door that's already been introduced into evidence, and the specific violation, 500-5, as well as Defense Exhibit 881, which shows both documents.
I think if it's the two pictures and the actual violation that was posted, I don't have an objection. Can I just confirm? Yeah, just show Mr. Shellhorn what it is you're moving in specifically. Objection? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Judge. No. All right. What are those numbers again, Mr. Belenkis? 800-81, 800-72, which is the letter, and the specific violation 500-5. All right. Those matters will be admitted into evidence. No objection from the state. And I'd like to publish these to the jury. Certainly. I'm putting on the, uh, the screen... 800-81. Hey, you got to turn the image, please. Finally, 500-5, the notice of eminent hazard that was posted on the door. I'm not going to ask you the specifics, but did you have a conversation with Michael Barrison about where he and all the people who were residing in the stable area were going to sleep? Mm, yes. And did you come back uh, at any point and see mattresses laid out outside on the front porch? Yes, I did. And when did you see those mattresses on the back porch? Um, at the time that the violation, the imminent hazard had stated. Now, did Michael Barrison and all these staff members there com comply with your order to vacate the premises? They abated the violation by not sleeping there and removing the mattresses, so yes. Now, did you have any discussions with Lori Cataract with regards to her staying in the farmhouse? She emailed us stating that she had received the violations, yes. So you got confirmation she was aware of them, correct? Correct. Now... And I can't ask you what you said or what she said, but did you come to an arrangement with Lori Cataract 
whereupon she was allowed to stay in the farmhouse. She and Michael or um, Robert Goodwin abated the imminent hazard, and therefore the imminent hazard was abated, and I could not. There's no reason for me to be able to keep them out. You basically gave them permission, based on what? Under you, the fire code. Under the fire code to go back into that residence, correct? Because the imminent hazard was abated. And to your knowledge, did she or Robert Goodwin take down those violations that were posted with the... the uh, so that sounds, yeah, that sounds I, legal. I, Okay. I don't know. How would he know that? He won't only know it if he returned to the scene, and we haven't established that yet. Did you return to the scene at any point when to check to see whether those violations were abated? No. It was late at the night, and they sent me emails with photos of everything in working order and video of the smoke alarms working. So you did that based on what they told you, not what you saw or investigated, correct? It was late at night, and I was not going to go out to the farm late at night. They sent us emails and videos of all the devices working properly. Okay. Um, now, when Michael Barrison was violated for the stable area, did you advise him of the violations concerning the farmhouse, because he was the owner. I did. Now, after you allowed Canarac and Goodwin to go back into the residence, did you at any time notify Michael Barrison, the owner, what you had done? Not that night. I didn't. We were going to do it in the morning. Well, did you do it in the morning? I did not get to it in the morning. No, we did not. Meant no. So as far as Michael Barrison was concerned... Objection. Yes, Mr. Belinkus. Not proper. Sustained. So before the shooting, did you notify Michael Barrison that Cataract and Goodwin were allowed to remain in the residence? I did not have contact information for Michael, so no. Did you or anyone on your behalf go out and remove those violation notices? Nobody from my office removed the violation notices. And those are the violation notices that I showed you in that picture, correct? Uh, the ones that were on the door of the house, yes. Can I have a moment, Judge? Sure. <clears throat> Do you have anything to do with the uh, stop construction order? No, that's cons that's UCC construction. I have nothing for you, Judge. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Lopez, uh, you were there on August 6th and issued a number of fire violations at the house? Correct. And you also issued a number of fire violations at the barn? Correct. And I think just to clear up what, what you were just asked about, you got an email from Ms. Kanarak on the night of August 6th, 2019? Correct. And she actually sent you videos and pictures that showed that there were fire detector, uh, smoke detectors and things of that nature. Yes. And from your perspective, that abated the hazard that you had observed, the imminent hazard, at least for purposes of that night. Correct. When you were at the property at some point on August 6th, Mr. Bolinkus asked you about seeing mattresses outside the barn? Correct. And during the course of dealing with Michael Barrison, did he tell you that he was going to be getting a hotel? Correct. And you found that to be satisfactory because... The barn is not a dwelling unit, so nobody should be staying there. 
Whose responsibility is it to fix uh, or remedy or abate uh, an imminent hazard? The owner, operator, tenant, occupant. And in this case, you actually had Ms. Kanderak and Mr. Goodwin abated what was going on at the barn, but nothing was abated at the, uh, excuse me, at the house, but nothing was abated at the barn. No, the barn was abated. The mattresses were removed, so there was no dwelling units inside the barn anymore. I understand. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Any redirect? No, sir. All right, you may step down, Mr. Lopez. Thank you. I right, call your next witness. Dan Vitale. Call is Mr. Dan Vitale. Dan Hi, Mr. Vitale. How, How are you? Sir. Good. Um, the left hand on the Bible, please. Raise your right hand. Please listen to my court clerk as she administers the oath. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony you give to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name as well, your last name for the record. Daniel Vitale, V-I-T-A-L-E. Thank you. All right, you may be seated, sir. And please keep your voice up nice and loud. That microphone only records. It does not project your voice in the courtroom. Okay. All right, so they have to hear your voice. If you don't understand a question, please indicate that. I'll have counsel rephrase. Okay. All right, go ahead, Mr. Malinkas. Mr. Vitale, where do you currently live? Uh, I currently live in Morris County. And, and what do you do for a living? Uh, currently, I'm a firefighter paramedic. Directing your attention uh, back to August 7th, 2019, uh, where were you working? St. Clair's Hospital, EMS. And, and uh, what training uh, do you have uh, to become an EMS? Uh, I went through EMT school, and then I went through paramedic school um, to become a paramedic where I was working at the time. And how long were you working there uh, prior to uh, August 7, 2019? I would say it was a few years prior, maybe three or four years prior to that date. So, again, your title is... Or was exactly what back then? Uh, mobile intensive care paramedic. Okay. Uh, on August 7th, did you have an occasion to uh, come into contact with my client, Michael Barrison? Yes. And how did that come about? We were called to an address, um, and we were dispatched there through our dispatch center and responded to that address where... He was located. All right. Uh, do you recall what the address is as you sit here today? Um, I don't recall. It's on my patient care report. Okay. I'm going to show you D605. And ask you to take a look at that and see if that refreshes your recollection as to where you went and saw my client Michael Barrison. 411 West Mill Road in Long Valley. Right. And, and you're referring to, to what, an official uh, document that was made? Uh, yeah, this, this is our patient care report. And, and what's included in this uh, type of report? Um, obviously all the dispatch, dispatch information, times, and our exam findings. Uh, were you there with someone else from uh, uh, St. Clair's EMS services? Yes, we ride two paramedics in New Jersey, so my partner, Kimberly, held us with me. All right, and, and uh, at some point in time, did you uh, come into contact with Michael Barrison? Yes. And uh, uh, did you uh, assess and treat him? Yes. In assessing him, uh, did you attempt to determine what happened? We did attempt and, that, yeah. 
and, and what was he able to tell you about the incident? Judge, can we be heard at sidebar? Yes. <clears throat> Let me see at sidebar, please. Mr. Shellhorn, let me see you again, please. In treating Michael Barrison. Did you ask him what happened? We did. And what was his response? His response was that someone was there to take his kids, and he couldn't remember really much of anything. Did he give you any information as to the actual event? No. Now, did you make note of his uh, present mental status? We did. And, and what was your observations of Barrison uh, while you were treating him? Confused. Did you receive information from anyone else at the scene that you used as far as any uh, treatment that you did? I don't really understand the question. No. Okay, let me try to rephrase it. I'm not sure I do either. Um, did you see any injuries on Michael Barrison? We did, yes. Did you see get information from anyone other than Michael Barrison as to what may have caused those injuries? We did, yes. And what was that? The police department. I'm going to object to the form of the question. It's hearsay, or it calls for a hearsay response. And those, these are statements from others, not from. They're statements with regards to specific injuries, Judge, that he used to determine what, what medical attention was necessary. Is that why? Did you ask others the question about what happened, or did they volunteer the information to you? They volunteered as we arrived on scene. All right. And who specifically did you speak to, do you recall? Uh, a patrolman. I don't remember his name. Right. It is reflected in my uh, patient care report. He was the one that transported with us. And he gave you information, and uh, w what was the reason? Did you need that information? Uh, it's pretty typical when the paramedics arrive on scene that the agency that's currently there gives us an update as to what's going on so we kind of know what to do and who to approach who might need our services who does not all right so at that point in time when you heard the statement you didn't know who might need your services oh no because we were just arriving on scene all right, all right. so uh, let me see that sidebar please <laughs>
uh, just rephrase the question, Mr. Belinkus, in accordance with the court's ruling, please. Mr. Vitale, did you receive information that Michael Barrison had suffered dog bites at the scene? Yes. Now, did you observe various injuries to Michael Barrison's body? Yes. I'm going to show you a stack of photographs. 852 to 871. And can you just take a, a, a quick look at all of those? While the witness is looking at those, perhaps we can come to sidebar. All right. You know what? Why don't we do this? It's 10 after 3. We'll take our afternoon recess. We can talk about this outside the jury's presence, and then we'll proceed. All right. All right. We'll take 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen.